Hey guys, today I want to talk about specifically uh, about event tick and how it can definitely ruin your whole experience, um, especially while you're in mobile. Because you know, well, uh, when you're developing games for mobile, you have less resources, you have less uh, processing power to process all the um, all the tasks that are uh, going to the CPU and are just handling over from CPU to GPU and all of the details that are happening inside the game, uh, it's whether it be GPU-wise, CPU-wise, whether it be something related to rendering or processing power related to AI or related to the code itself. I don't know. There's just a lot of details. So you you have to kind of manage your whole power and um, know exactly where to put that power. So the first thing that I've always faced in my developing experiences is that you have to get you have to use as less as you could from event tick so if you must not use it then don't use it there are some alternatives to do so so i'm just gonna go i've just put together these two uh, actors these are really simple actors uh one is called destination bp one is called test bp and i just put them uh, into the map. I'm just trying to uh, explain how you can use alternatives to uh, event take. So this is the test BP and this is where the whole uh, process starts. You can easily set all of this up with event take. So, but I'm just trying to show how to not do that and how to do it in another way. The first thing that you could use uh, instead of event tick, if you want some timer, there's a function called set timer by events. Just go ahead and set timer by event or by function name or I don't know, you know it better than me. Uh, I've put the timer to uh, point 0.1. Uh, what it does is, is that actually um, it just shows me that the timer works. So let me show you. So yeah. As you can see, the timer is working, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just it's it takes every point one second. So this is the timer that you can easily use instead of event tick. And what it does actually is that if you uh, you have the option to in event tick in every blueprint actor, you have the option to either. Uh, set this tick enabled to false so in that case you don't have any tick anymore or you can just set set tick intervals so as you can see the frequency in seconds at which um this tick function will be executed so if i just go ahead and put it to something like 10 it will be executed it will be literally ticked 10 times a second so it's much much less than the uh, actual even tick which is ticking every frame. So if you are getting uh, 60 frames per second, you are ticking 60 times in only this actor. So imagine you will have a lot of a lot of a lot of other actors in the game in the whole level that are ticking all together and are just ruining the, the whole experience and the whole performance. It's just I mean consider this way. Right now it's at 10 millisecond with uh, with 20 of these actors running some I don't, I wouldn't say uh, pretty complicated, but running some complicated things on event tick, it could easily go down to some like 40, uh, sometimes 50, depending on the device that you're trying to uh, run the game on. So let's go ahead. So I've just explained this. This tick interval is really important, but remember, just set the value that you want and then test it afterwards. Sometimes it just doesn't work. Sometimes using the uh, timer is a better idea. The other piece of code that I put together is that, so I want this timer to be ticked until I go into the box. So when, um, I've made a little bit of research about the box collision and apparently, um, uh, since Unreal Engine 4.26, these box collisions are much, much lighter and they're not as heavy as event tick. So I haven't found anything else. This is all I know about box collisions and 
how they react performance wise. So I want to make sure that the uh, box is colliding with the player, with my player, with the first per person character. The other way to do it is to just uh, get player character. Get character Y. Oh, sorry. Get character get player character and then just put an equal to it and then this and then the branch would do the job perfectly fine and then uh, you can just go ahead and do something like this yeah these are the two ways to do it to make sure that this is your character that's colliding with the box but sometimes the other way doesn't work some people do say that the other method is better, but I, I don't really know. Um, so we are just making sure that the, this is the first person character that's been colliding with the uh, with the box. And then what I've set up is that is a variable called actor and it's a an array of value, uh, array of actors. And then I've just, you know, since we are having two um, we are having these two BPs that we want to communicate between them. So I've just, oh, I made, I made it editable as well. So instance editable, or you can just click on this. Um, and I've just uh, clicked on this plus icon, and then I've just picked up the, uh, the BP that I want. So you can see it here this should be piece set up here so i can just go ahead and use my uh, variable here and since in, it's an array you need to use a for each loop which it's not the most performant uh way to do it but uh, i mean this is something like even tick it, it's better to not use it all together if you can just go ahead and instead of i mean if you you just have one actor in here and you you sometimes you have just three or four actors all together and you have to you must use uh an array of actors but if you have like one actor you can just go ahead and put this on uh, a single variable and then you can just go ahead and do whatever you want to do so this is what i did so in here this is called a blueprint interface. So what is a blueprint interface? So a blueprint interface is like, like, like it's uh, saying it's an interface that's making it possible between some BPs between or between all the actors in the game to communicate together. So how you can create one? Right click uh, and you have blueprints, blueprint interface. Just, right cl uh, just click on it and rename it and you have something like this. All I did was to add a new function you, you can um, spe specify inputs and outputs for it which in my case I didn't uh, really need them so and after that you need to specify which blueprint interface you are using in all of the actors that you want to use this specified blueprint interface so in that case just go to the class settings and uh, add type in your uh, blueprint interface in my case it's called it's named test interface and uh, do the same in the other actors as well so now what how you can do is that uh, you specified a function called call test in my case so just go ahead and you want to communicate with the other actor through this function fine just go ahead and Type call test and you have some like call test interface call. Uh, yeah, event call test is for the actor that's receiving the event and call call test interface call is the event that's sending the uh, the whole thing. So since we are using for each loop, I've just what I did was to just test from here because this is the destination that we want to send it is really important without it it wouldn't work and 
And after that, we want to, as I told you, I want to uh, invalidate the timer. So here I've just promoted this to a variable and then I can just go ahead and type clear and invalidate the timer by handle, which in this case, you have to do it this way. Uh, invalidate, yeah, clear and invalidate timer by handle. And let's see what happens. So you have the timer on the screen, but when you go into it, you don't have the timer anymore. And this is something else that I want to talk about later on. But right now the timer is completely invalidated. You don't have you don't have it anymore. And it means that you don't have an event tick anymore after the events run. Oh. oh the other thing that we have here, um, and it's it is similar to a blueprint interface, but it's harder to follow for other people that are trying to uh, read your code. And it's called even dispatcher. So it's like you can just go ahead and uh, if this um, if this is the sender BP, you can just go ahead and call uh, add an event dispatcher and name it whatever you want. In my case, it's named test, and you can just type call test. Oh, you can just do it like this, and you have all kinds of things in here, and you can just create call. So, but this is a little bit different than uh, Blueprint interface. So, if you want to use that event dispatcher, it's not like you need to specify in the sender BP which actors you want to uh, send this information to. You can just throw something into the world and some some actors will catch it they're always listening to it that's how it that's how it works really so how we can do it is that uh most of the times it's in event begin play so what you have to do is should to just go uh, get the actor of class because you know this is in the actor called test bp this is an actor so you have to make sure that you get the test bp actor and then there's a there's a function called bind event to something like that. In our case, this is called test. So you can just test and you have all these other uh, options that you can use. You can even use the call test. You can use the other even dispatcher as well to 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 call other actors to do something else. I mean, this is this is getting really complicated. I know that and I'm not really explaining it really well, but this is how it is. You need to train a little bit for yourself to know it, to understand it better. But anyway, you can just bind the event and then create a custom event from it, name it whatever you want, and then afterwards you can do whatever you want. In my case, I wanted to explain something else. Because there's an event tick and some people are using event ticks because because of this little thing here, delta seconds. You don't really need to use event tick when you want to use delta seconds, unless you are using delta seconds every second in the world. I mean, in that case too, you can use timer by event or by function name or by whatever you want actually. Um, so instead, this is one thing that you can do instead. And if, if you want some animations, this is the way to do it. So you just go ahead and create a timeline, add timeline, and then you can just go ahead and have fun with your timeline. You can just uh, hold shift and left click and add things to it. You can just set their time, set their value, um, set the length. If you want a vector track, you can add a vector track. If you want an event track, if you're a color track, you have a lot of options here. You don't really need to use event tick instead. And you can just go ahead, and this is the uh, value that is given you. And you can just update it to whatever it is, and you have the option to use the finished uh, node as well, which this is how it does it. So it just, um, this is going to the 20 because it's uh, triggering the event four times, that's why. If you don't want to do that, you can just go ahead and put a do once in here, and that's it. 
The other way to do it to uh, communicate with between actors is to use the custom event. So you have the custom event here called custom uh, called custom test. And you can just go ahead and get actors of actor of class. You have the option to get actors of class and actors of class and actor of class, which actors of class will give you the array of those classes. And you can just go ahead and call the custom event. It's as simple as that. It's really no difference. It's completely the same. One thing that I deal uh, that I don't really remember um, if I uh, explained it was this one here. I can't remember uh, blueprint interface. So how you can call blueprint interface? So this is called um, this is calling the actor here to have the blueprint interface set up, but you need to make sure that there's something for it in in the destination actor as well. If you don't have any uh, anything in it, it's just calling it and nothing happens in this way. So you can just go ahead, uh, since you have set up your class settings, you can just go ahead and type the function, which in our case, it's called call test. And this is the, I believe, yeah, this is the event for it, which again goes to the timeline that I've set up and yeah. Yeah, I, I believe I, I explained everything. And these are the things that you need to use instead of event tick. I wouldn't use event ticks more often in PC as well, because mostly I've uh, worked with mobiles in UE4 and mobiles are like pretty weak, I would say. But I would suggest that if you're working with PC as well, don't use event tick as much often. That's what I would say, to be honest. Um, use these methods, after all. These are the uh, alternatives that you have instead of uh, event uh, If this video really helped you, please hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, and if you like what I create in this channel, please hit that subscribe button as well. And if you have any questions, I would be more than glad to answer you in the comment sections. Cheers.